is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold penny i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 toyota rav4 courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because there is a new color for 2024 that's not the full reason of course but there is legendary reliability as well you got to appreciate that the rav4 does compete with the honda crv and the mazda c x50 and ultimately this is the number one selling suv in america and that says a lot right there so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 rav4 first one being the le starting at twenty eight thousand four hundred seventy five dollars which is actually a nine hundred dollar bump from the 2023 model year xle for twenty nine thousand nine eighty five xle premium which is the one we are in today starting at thirty two thousand eight seventy five adventure for thirty four thousand six seventy trd off-road for thirty eight thousand ninety five dollars and lastly the limited starting at thirty six thousand $780. And so out of all of those trim levels, all wheel drive does come standard on the Adventure and TRD off-road. All the other trims come standard with front wheel drive. If you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those other trim levels, simply add $1,400 then to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the RAV4 is actually going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder for all trim levels, putting out 203 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 180 84 pound-feet of torque coming in at 5,000 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels or all wheels through an eight-speed automatic. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.4 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 27 in the city, 35 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 25 city, 33 then on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here on our RAV4, wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. So there's a bunch of buttons located just to the left of the shifter. Drive modes will include eco, normal, normal sport for the on-road drive modes, but then it's also going to give you off-road drive modes as well, including snow, mud and sand, and then rock and dirt as well. Ultimately adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, and actually the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well. And so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the 2024 RAV4 here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, Go! We're in sport driving mode, by the way. It's okay. It's not gonna win any races for sure, but you know what? This is built for reliability. It's not actually built for drag racing, believe it or not. So it's enough to get the job done. I'll just put it that way, but it's certainly not the quickest thing in the world. And that was even in sport driving mode, but it'll get the job done nonetheless. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.1 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 year stopping distance goes, that comes in at 126 feet, which is kind of average pretty much par for the course there usually with suvs you find anywhere from 120 to upper 130 so 126 feet is pretty much right in the middle there so as far as braking feel goes since there's no one behind us it's 100 on the softer side of things again as expected in most suvs not all suvs but most out there so wouldn't have minded if they firmed up the braking feel a little bit but having said that it's what you would expect an suv to break like i'll put it that way but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes as we are cruising over some of the smoothest roads in hagerstown it's really good right now so absolutely no issues there ride quality has been perfectly fine absorbing the road imperfections just fine there as far as steering feel goes it is a little bit on the looser side but it's not too bad and you can noticeably tell the difference depending upon the drive mode that you put it in i'm going to put it back in sport for a second and it definitely weightens up that steering wheel 100 percent much heavier steering feel in the sport driving mode than if you were to put it in eco it does instantly loosen up but Either way, it's not bad. I definitely prefer the heavier weight in the sport driving mode just for that steering feel alone though. That was, that's pretty darn good. But anyways, then touching on cabin noise, we're going 55 miles per hour right now. So I'll let you guys kind of be the judge here with my road mic there. There isn't a whole lot of really wind noise or road noise. There's a little bit, but it's pretty much as you would expect it to sound like as far as uh, cabin noise goes on the inside here. 
Touching of visibility, 100% perfectly fine. Because of the shape of the RAV4, you're definitely not gonna have any issues, especially with rear visibility. But I did want to also mention one more thing with forward visibility, you do get rain sensing windshield wipers for the XLE trim level and up. So as it's supposed to start raining today, whenever it starts to rain, RAV4 is automatically gonna turn on those windshield wipers for you, just like automatic headlights. It's just one less thing you gotta worry about. So that's a pretty darn convenient feature there for forward visibility then as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Toyota RAV4. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Toyota RAV4 finished in midnight black metallic. I think this color looks absolutely freaking amazing on the RAV4, but there is one new color for the 2024 model year. That is going to be Army Green. Toyota's had that color on some of its other vehicles. They have now brought it to the RAV4 as well, but that color is only available on the Adventure and TRD off-road trim level, since it is more of an off-roadish color, I guess you could say. So, did want to mention that. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the RAV4 is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number two, indicating that the RAV4 is built and assembled in Canada, our neighbors up north. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Projector LED headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. You gotta love that because they are projectors as well as opposed to the LED reflector. So this is the very best possible lighting setup available right now on every vehicle out there today. So that's pretty cool. LED daytime running lights coming standard. You got the automatic feature as well, along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite a direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so very nice down below you will find led fog lights for the xle premium trim level and up i should have turned them on for this portion of the video i'll throw some b-roll over top of it here but i do love that i didn't have that in the le that i reviewed last year but the front grill is going to differ amongst the trim levels i did want to mention that as well and actually the ground clearance is going to differ amongst the trim levels as well so take for example if you were to go with the le or xle trims you're going to find 8.4 inches of ground clearance let me get down here just so i can show you guys and then 8.6 inches of ground clearance for the xle premium trim level and up so if you have a little bit more of a off-roading type of driveway perhaps maybe the xla premium trim level and up is going to be better for you but anyways that pretty much rounds off the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of the rav4 roof rails do come standard on the xle trim level and up therefore the le is not going to get them you will find a floating roof line on the c pillar in the back there can't really tell the difference because we do have the black exterior but there is a black kind of accent piece that separates the roof from the rest of the body that's what that is essentially rear privacy glass does come standard for every single trim level across the board taking a look at the side mirror they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for the XLE trim level and up. And then LED integrated turret signals for the XLE trim level and up then as well. Then if you were to go with the TRD off-road, you're going to find gloss black side mirrors. And then the limited trim is going to add to that some puddle lights as well. So that is pretty cool. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. They will differ, of course, amongst the trim levels yet again. 17-inch steel wheels with covers for the LE. 17-inch gray metallics for the XLE. Then 19-inch chrome alloys for the XLE premium and limited trim levels. That's what you guys are looking at, of course. 19-inch matte gray alloys for the Adventure. And lastly, 18-inch matte black TRD flow-formed alloys for that TRD off-road trim level. But I think it looks dang good from the side profile here, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the RAV4, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, rear window wiper. You will also find LED tail lights coming standard for every single trim level across the board. That isn't always the case, so I'd like to emphasize that. You do have some like the video and subscribe lettering found on the real tailgate, of course, or it might say RAV4 and XLE all-wheel drive but either way if you are into new car reviews i've been doing this now for approximately nine years so go ahead and smash the subscribe button if you are into that kind of thing but then just below it all you will find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips they look dang good down there but as always i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here is that exhaust clip All 
Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the RAV4, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, you are going to find a power tailgate if you go with the XLE premium trim leveling up like we have today. So there is a button on the uh, key fob, there's a button on the tailgate itself, but if you go with that XLE or the LE trim levels, you're gonna find a manual tailgate just to let you know. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 37.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 69.8 cubic feet then behind the first row. Also in the back there, you're gonna find a cargo cover for the XLE trim leveling up. It is gonna be optional for the LE trim level though. LED cargo lighting does come standard. That was definitely nice to see because that isn't always the case. 12 volt power outlet for the XLE trim leveling up. Then if you were to look underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire. There's a little bit of storage around there, but there's some indented storage on the kind of the back right hand corner there. And there are some chrome plated tie down anchors then as well. But then make your way up to the rear leg room that comes in at 37.8 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. You will find a 12 volt power outlet for the second row passengers as well along with rear ventilation there is a rear center armrest with cup holders that does come standard as well and then heated rear seats will come on the limited trim level only but then make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating for the le trim level power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar for the xle trim level and up soft text upholstery for the xle premium trim level you're going to find some orange stitching for the adventure trd stitching in the headrest for the trd off-road heated front seats come on the limited and the power adjustable passenger seat on that limited trim level as well overall seating was plenty fine i definitely didn't have any issues at least in my short little test drive here today then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping and it's going to be wrapped in urethane for the le and xle and then leather wrapped for the xle premium trim level and up and if you wanted a heated steering wheel that is going to be optional on the xle trim level and up but it doesn't come standard on any particular trim level though but then make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your toyota and RAV4 badging on the one side. Then when you flip it over, pretty basic lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear tailgate there. But it is all keyless entry with the push button start for the XLE trim level and up. And then it's going to be that traditional turnkey start for the LE trim level. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone to the brake and press that engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, you will find a seven inch digital screen in the center for all trim levels, but the limited. That limited trim level is going to give you a full digital gauge cluster, 12 0.3 inches to be exact but since we got the seven inch screen here you can adjust what is on there by using a steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel and it has absolutely everything you could possibly need up there there's your outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty you could choose to display a digital speedometer if you wanted to there's safety information radio information trip a trip b and the list goes on so like i said everything you could possibly want on the digital portion at least of those gauges but now let's go ahead and take a look at overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to come standard on the xle premium trim level and up so i loved that overhead sunglass holder for all trim levels led interior lighting though all trim levels across the board that definitely isn't always the case home light controls are going to be optional for the rav4 dual zone climb control for the xle trim level and up wireless phone charger also going to be optional but we do have that option actually it's located just in front of the shifter here so that is pretty cool i'm gonna go ahead and put my phone there and let it charge up a little bit but Overall, interior quality was perfectly fine. One of the cool things about the RAV4, I remember seeing this last year, is just above the passenger side glove box, you got a little bit of rubberized storage there. So passenger could perhaps put their self in there if they wanted to. Uh, just behind the shifter, you got your cup holders, of course, and within the center armrest. Actually a decent amount of space in there, a good bit. And you actually have a couple USB charging ports in there as well. So overall, I do like the two-tone color theme and uh, interior quality will definitely get the job done. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here because this thing is massive actually. So eight inch color touchscreen display, which is clearly not what we have today, coming standard on the LE, XLE, XLE premium and adventure trim levels. However, there is a 10.5 inch color touchscreen display coming standard on the TRD off-road and limited trims, but then it's going to be a $1,410 option on our XLE premium trim level at least. And we do have quite a few options. So if you're seeing a lot of stuff that just doesn't make sense, it's because there's plenty of options for all of those trim levels essentially but Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard. Wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay also coming standard. That is amazing. Most vehicles don't do that even today. So you don't have to fiddle with any USB cables on this thing. So that's pretty cool. You can check
check out your driving statistics up there, of course, as well, along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound system, six speakers is going to come standard on all trim levels, but the limited. However, that limited trim is going to give you an 11 speaker JBL sound system that is optional on the other trims. We have that option as part of that $1,410 optional package that we have with us here today. So that's pretty cool. I didn't test this one out last year. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out our JBL sound system that we have with us here today. <laughs> Yeah, there's a ton of bass. I don't know if you guys remember seeing it when I showed the cargo area clip, but there is a subwoofer in the back. There's also an external amp, so clarity was perfectly fine as well, but yeah, you can definitely tell there is an absolute ton of bass. That sound system is overkill for the RAV4, and that is definitely a good thing. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, of course, is when you do put the RAV4 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera, and it actually does take up the entire screen, which isn't always the case. So that's pretty cool. That's going to let you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS top safety pick, which is a very good start right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You got a driver's knee airbag as well, along with a front passenger seat cushion airbag that doesn't always come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard will be Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, and road sign recognition then as well. And then if you were to go with the XLE trim level and up, you're gonna get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And then the Limited is going to add on to all of that front and rear parking sensors as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the RAV4, safety is very good. I'm gonna start by saying that, but the real selling point has always been for the RAV4, the legendary reliability. That is why this thing is going to last over 200,000 miles if you take care of it. I'll just put it that way. And that is what it's known for. Check out Consumer Reports Magazine. That'll verify that for you. Also, I do like the new tech on this one. I would have loved to have seen that 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, but this massive infotainment screen is absolutely wonderful. And even the gauges that we have here with us here today, absolutely wonderful as well. So no issues there. And I do like the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. That's part of the tech too. That was pretty cool. You don't always find that, but the only room for improvement I could possibly find is uh, it's kind of a basic interior quality. It doesn't bother me personally, but if you were to compare it to uh, some of the competition with, uh, let's say Hyundai, Hyundai usually outdoes themselves with the interior quality. Like rather than these rubber knobs that we got here on the RAV4, it would be a nice kind of aluminum feel to them. It's not that it's bad. It's just some of the competition offers a little better fit and finishes than the RAV4. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the RAV4 in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. My heart breaks.